Hello, Eric here. I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about how SpaceX might move uh, Starship, Starship and Super Heavy, to Cape Canaveral to launch there. And this is assuming they can't just launch uh, from Boca Chica and land at Cape Canaveral. And it's probably a pretty good assumption, at least initially, early in Starship. And uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, uh, they aren't going to just pick it up with a helicopter and fly it there that way. Um, they're probably going to need to ship it, and by ship I mean uh, ship it uh, via the ocean. So let's start by looking at the situation in Boca Chica. So on the right, way over on the right, we have Starbase. So this is where they're building uh, Starship and Super Heavy. And then over way on the left, we have the town of Brownsville and the Brownsville port. So the first problem is how do we get from uh, Starbase down to the port of Brownsville? And uh, the first thing is to take it along Boca Chica Boulevard. And this looks fairly straightforward. Um, it's pretty wide. There really isn't that much traffic along here. Um, there are a number of places where there are electrical wires that go across the road, and those would probably need to be relocated underground, but that's really not that huge of a thing to do. And kind of nicely, way down here uh, to the west, the port of Brownsville has put in this new road um, that very conveniently comes from the port, one of the frontage roads along the port, to Boca Chica Boulevard. So that means rather than going kind of into town and trying to get a starship more in town out to the port, uh, there's now this new road, which is mostly done now, uh, kind of across the swampy flats uh, to, towards where the port is. Now, one of the obvious questions you might ask is why doesn't Starbase, uh, why doesn't SpaceX just build some sort of dock uh, just to the north of where Starbase is, wouldn't that be a lot more convenient? And the answer is yes, it would be a lot more convenient, but uh, there are kind of two problems. The first is uh, a lot of this land is state park land, which means you really can't do that sort of thing. And the other problem is even though this looks like water, most of this is really swamp. So there's really not much water there. So it would uh, be a large amount of work to do it. So uh, at least for the uh, short time, uh, it makes sense for SpaceX to be taking things to the port. Now, if we come in and look at the port, this is a close-up uh, overhead view of the port. Um, and the red line at the bottom is where that new road comes in. So you see the new road gets them on this frontage road. And then the question is, where would they take the Starship and Super Heavy to load it onto some ocean-going vessel? And it turns out SpaceX has been uh, in negotiations to purchase, or has already purchased, this Fortune Ferris site here. And that looks pretty convenient. And interestingly, uh, just across the shipping canal is where SpaceX has one of their converted... Uh, oil rigs that they're going to use for launching. Um, Deimos is here. Uh, Phobos, I think, the other one I think is in Mississippi now. Uh, they're both undergoing uh, refurbishment. So uh, if you're just going to do something where you actually load onto one of those, this is a really, really nice place to do it. So that's how you get from Starbase onto some sort, some sort of ship or barge or other transport. And at this point, we come up with a really kind of interesting question. Oh, and here's a nice picture. Um, I think this is actually Phobos, but it really doesn't matter. They look the same. So here's the interesting question. Are you going to ship it horizontal or vertical? And initially, the answer to that looks pretty simple. Um, this is the Saturn V first stage, and it's about 42 meters by 10 meters and NASA shipped this horizontally. 
and put it on a barge, ship it horizontally, roll it off on the other side, and that's what they did. And that is what NASA has done with all the parts for shuttle and the parts for SLS as well. So horizontal seems like a pretty obvious thing to do. But interestingly, so far, uh, SpaceX has only shipped Starship and Super Heavy vertically. Now, obviously, the distance from the build site here to the launch site is much, much closer than the distance from here to the port. But you could still think of doing these vertically. So I don't think from Boca Chica that there's actually a reason they would have to choose one or the other. Um, I'll talk more about what I think they're going to do later. So we've gotten Starship and Super Heavy. We have a way to get them to Brownsville to the port. We've got them on some sort of ship and we're taking them over to Florida. Now, if we want to ship vertically, you know, I said it seems kind of like a weird thing, but SpaceX already has this big experience shipping rocket stages vertically. Um, they regularly ship the Falcon 9 from a landing spot back to Canaveral. And it's only 42 meters versus 72 meters, but it's also a lot thinner than the Super Heavy and Starship are, so it's a little more delicate. So, they seem to have no problems, you know, shipping that back. Now, you can make an argument that, well, they don't have to ship as far. But, in fact, the farthest drone ship landing was about 1,250 kilometers. Uh, Brownsville to Port Canaveral was about 2,160 kilometers. So, it's more, but it's not like a ton more. It's about twice as far. So, maybe you would choose to do it vertically. So, once we get to Port Canaveral, um, we can talk about some more details. And so, Port Canaveral at the bottom, Kennedy Space Center up towards the top. Uh, in the top, we have the vertical assembly building, and then we have the two big pads that were used for Apollo and for the shuttle, uh, 39A and 39B. And of course, 39A, SpaceX currently has a lease uh, they launch Falcon 9, they launch Falcon Heavy, and they launch all of the crew Dragon missions, and the normal Dragon missions probably from there. Um, they also have another site, uh, Space Launch Complex 40, uh, often called Slick 40, just down the beach from there. And just in case you're wondering, Slick 36, this is where, where uh, Blue Origin is building out their complex uh, for New Glenn. So that is the basic layout of the land. So you ship, you come in at Port Canaveral, and then you need to figure out how to get to your actual launch site. And there are a few different options here. So the first option is to use the existing SpaceX dock at Port Canaveral. So this is what SpaceX uses for the Falcon 9 boosters. Now, remember the Falcon 9s come in, they come in vertically, they take them off, they put them horizontally. And this is certainly an option that they could choose to use. Um, it's easy to get to with a ship. You just bring it in the canal, put it up against here, take whatever you want off, and uh, you are golden, at least for that part of shipping. Um, you could support vertical shipping. From what I can tell, there are no barriers for you bringing something very tall in here. They already bring the Falcon 9s in, um, and that is already pretty darn tall. Uh, unfortunately, it's pretty far away from where you actually want to go. Uh, Pad 39A is very north, Slick 40 is very north, so you have to ship it a long way. Uh, 12 miles or 16 miles. And you're also pretty close to the uh, Air Force Base, and there are probably some power line issues along the way uh, on the ground track from here to those launch sites. So maybe you could do it, maybe you couldn't. Uh, that I really don't know, but this is at least an option. Um, in case you're wondering, yes, those are the two drone ships. Uh, just read the instructions near the top, and of course, I still love you near the bottom. Um, you can see support ships in between the two, and then kind of off the right, you can see the two 
uh, ships that were designated as fairing catching ships. Uh, they don't use those anymore as they've decided not to try to catch fairings anymore. So first option. Um, second option is you can keep going east and there are a set of locks that can get you out of the port. So um, there's a drawbridge here that you can fit through and then there's the Canaveral lock that goes between uh, essentially the port which is connected to the Atlantic Ocean and over here on the left you have what is called the Banana River um, which is really kind of a large flat, flat uh, swampy place rather rather than the river, at least the way I would think of a river. So this looks great. Um, unfortunately, right here, just west of the drawbridge, um, there are a set of electrical lines and you can't go over about 23 meters. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you want to go through here, you're not shipping vertically unless you paid a ton, a ton of money to try to redo those lines. And that seems pretty unlikely. So I think going here means horizontal shipping. So we get out on the Banana River and we start heading north. And when you look at the picture here, something to note is, I remember I said this was kind of swampy land. In a lot of places, the Banana River is not very deep at all. And you can kind of tell the light parts are not very deep. The dark parts are deep. And in fact, there has been, over the years, quite a bit of dredging that you would do uh, so that ships can actually carry things through here. So, um, we're going north of the Banana River. Here's our first option. Um, we could stop at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, uh, just to the east here, uh, at a place called Peterson Point. And you can see uh, Peterson Point has this nice dock. And you can also tell it's reasonably deep next to it just by the color. So this would be a fairly easy place to bring Starship and, uh, and Super Heavy. Nice dock. Um, you're on the Air, Air Force Station. You need Air Force approval anyway, but you would need special approval to start doing these shipping things. And if you look in the the first picture you can see down in the right there are a lot of buildings right next to this dock and you have to figure out how to navigate kind of through uh, the main part of the Air Force Station before you can get out and then figure out how to get onto a road and get to some place uh, better. So this is an option I don't think this is a very likely option I don't think it's really much better than uh, doing the port so, if we don't do option two, what do we do? We're going to keep heading north. And you'll notice we're staying in these dredged areas. The, you can see the very distinct black lines where the river has been dredged out. So you can actually take decent sized vehicles or decent sized ships through it. So, option tw number three. So, um, I'm going to call this near Slick 40. We've come up. And there's this nice little basin here. Um, we could head out to the east, head a little north, and that's very conveniently close to uh, Slick 40. Um, it's a nice dredge path. There's next to it what's called a turning pool. Uh, usually you bring your, your ship or your barge or whatever. You need room to spin it around when you take it back out. So that's why you have these larger areas. So that looks really nice. Um, it's close. Close to 39A, you could actually go off on one of the side roads and get up to 39A as well. So that looks kind of nice. Um, the problem is there's actually no existing docks there. So if you are going to unload here, um, you need to build some sort of dock. And this is a wetland, and that means doing environmental impact, and it's generally a long process. So option number three. For the future options, we're going to keep uh, moving north, and we've now moved into the NASA area, uh, away from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station area, or we're kind of at the border between them. Option four, uh, the vertical assembly building. So you come up, you come down this 
other canal and you are right near the VAB. And that looks like this. So you can see there's a nice turning basin. This is used for launches, for press, uh, fairly often. Um, you can see kind of near the middle top, you see something that says Pegasus Barge Dock. And the Pegasus Barge is a NASA barge that is used to ship uh, rocket components. Here you can see one, uh, the Pegasus Barge Dock 2, the dock, and that is the first SLS stage, the Artemis 1 stage coming out and heading towards the uh, vertical assembly building. Oh, I want to talk about this a little more. Sorry. Um, this is pretty nice. It's mostly turnkey. You just have to have some more sort of barge, come up, uh, get, get to it, wheel off, and then you're already on the roads and you are pretty near to 39A. Um, there's another option um, starting in the north part. Um, you could conceivably come um, a little closer to 39A. There's this spot called... Uh, the observation gantry. So there's a tall gantry here you can climb up on and you can kind of see all over the place if you go to the Kennedy Space Center tours. This is one of the places you can stop at. And you can see there's room to get in. Um, there's kind of a dock there, uh, but not really probably the kind of dock you'd want to unload. So that's uh, really not that great. It is close to uh, 39A. And then the other option, well, we just come up and there's this very nice turning basin and dredged out spot and it gets you uh, right to 39A. And that is really nice. Um, once again, there's actually no dock there. But uh, you can see that there are places that would actually be pretty uh, convenient to get to. And here in this picture of 39A, that big concrete circle is supposedly a Starship landing pad. Um, just a little bit up and left is the starting of a Starship launch pad. But who knows if they're actually going to keep going that way. Um, that one's been there for quite a while. So that's the 39A option. Um, what do I think? Well, given these options, I think the most likely option is they'll ship um, both stages horizontally and they will just roll them off at the Pegasus dock at the VAB. Um, you have existing infrastructure there. You have existing process. NASA has been using it recently, so we know that all of the channels are dredged enough that you don't have any problem getting in there. Um, the maritime organizations around there are used to people shipping there. So that is, seems by far to me to be the lowest, uh, lowest barrier of entry. Um, you could also do horizontal shipping to 39A if SpaceX decided they didn't want to be around the VAB and they really wanted to have their own way of getting there. Um, I could see them doing this. But as I said, they don't have a dock and you would have to go through the process of building one. So that really doesn't seem very, very likely. Um, the third case, shipping to Port Canaveral. And that, I think, is the most turnkey. You just go there, you already have all your dock and that sort of stuff. But then once you are off the ship, um, getting to your actual launch sites uh, seems to be a bit more of a problem. Much longer drive and probably more power lines and other things to deal with. So my guess is they'll probably do the first one. Um, I don't think the other two are particularly likely. So anyway, that's what I think uh, the basic outline is for shipping Starship to, to Florida for launches. Um, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe.